So hello everyone. Welcome to one of the most important update that we have received from the Indian Regulatory Authority CDSO. CDSO has recently released a draft guidelines for clinical trials in India and in this video we will understand what exactly does the guideline say and what are the important update that you need to know. If you are a pharmaceutical or a regulatory affairs professional it, it is very important that you watch the video till the end so that you can understand what are the important update. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you keep receiving such important updates without further ado let's start this video so now let us look at the exact notification provided by the cdseo so on april 10 2024 this particular month the CDSO has released the revision of CDSO guidance for industry version 1.2 and in this particular draft guideline the CDSO has taken consultation from different stakeholders in order to align the new drugs and clinical trial rules that were released in 2019 and they have tried to streamline the application in Sugam portal as well. Now let us see what exactly are the updates in this draft guidelines. So when it comes to update, there are four major updates. First is regarding the alignment of the NDCT rules 2019 to the industry standards. Second is they have enhanced in evaluation for safety and efficacy of the new drugs. Following that they have ensured that in this particular guideline they have streamlined the quality information submission system. And finally they have also revised the guidelines for the biological products. Now let us look at them one by one. So the key focus area of this particular draft release are the first one is alignment. So this particular draft states that the guidelines that they have re received or they have uh, prepared are in alignment to the NDCT rule 2019. There were some rules and regulation in NDCT 2019 which were not completely aligned uh, in the process that is followed in the application process as well as the global guidance. And this particular draft guideline, it will provide uh, clarity and simplification in terms of the application uh, process for the sponsor. This will ensure that whenever we have a new clinical trial application for clinical trial conduct, then that particular process is clear and simplified. Okay, so this particular draft guidelines has provided an, an alignment related to the submission process as well as the SUGAM application process. Next thing is evaluation. So this particular draft guideline release has provided an emphasis on importance of submitting a comprehensive form CT04. So form CT04 is for a clinical trial application and this particular guidelines has uh, provided outline for evaluating the safety and efficacy of the new drug. So how the industry should ensure the safety and efficacy of the new drug and what is the role of all the stakeholders in this particular evaluation process. So that has been given in this particular draft version 1.2 released by the CDSCO. The next aspect is quality information. So this particular guidelines uh, that they have uh, released has provided information regarding how to prepare the quality information related to biotechnological and biological products. So what are the quality uh, information parameters and how are they to be uh, reported okay when it comes to biotechnological and biological products and this particular guidelines has also provided a, a roadmap to ensure that the review process is ensuring that it protects the patient safety okay so the emphasis has been on patient safety and to streamline the process so that quality information is provided from one stakeholder to another and finally reaching to the subject the last uh, key focus area in this particular draft guidelines has been regarding the biological products. So the overall draft guideline release ensures that it is in alignment with NDCD rule 2019. But when it comes to biological product, they were still having uh, some clarity issues when it comes to biological product. And in this particular guideline, they have revised the guidelines in regard to uh, specific areas such as chemistry and pharmaceutical information that are required for biologics. Okay, so when it comes to aspect of the chemistry of the biological molecule as well as what pharmaceutical information needs to be provided when it comes to submission uh, of the molecule to the regulatory authority or even the permission to conduct clinical trial. So that particular biological product guidelines has been revised in this particular 
draft guidelines so these were the four main focus areas so when it comes to uh, this draft guidelines so these four focus areas have made the most highlight and this is what you should uh, need to know when it comes to the guidelines now the next aspect is that when it comes to sponsor when it comes to the pharma industry or the pharmaceutical uh, giant so what do the sponsor need to know the sponsor is someone who would enter into the clinical trial who would want to conduct the clinical trial okay so what do the sponsor need to know from this draft guidelines let's see so the first focus area is the application submission okay so this particular guidelines had made sure that the sponsor uh, submits the application for conducting of the clinical trial electronically either on the sugam portal or the national single window system okay so the application of the clinical trial has been entirely electronically uh, done so that has been a significantly uh, major step when it comes to elimination of unnecessary paperwork and this will also lead to reduction in the approval time and expediting the process so the process of receiving approval for conducting clinical trial has been made digital electronic and it has also received the time of processing as well as the requirement of unnecessary paperwork so it has been transformed the application process so the sponsor would benefit definitely from it and it shall ensure that more and more clinical trials are being conducted in india the next aspect is the quality assurance system so the quality assurance system implementation have been uh, laid focus on and now the sponsors are responsible for establishing and maintaining a robust quality assurance system so when it comes to icsgcp gcp uh, icsgcp gcp principle number 13 to ensure the quality assurance system so now even the cdso is in alignment with the sponsor requirement for having a robust quality assurance system and this will ensure that uh, we follow the clinical trial adherence to the protocol gcp guidelines and the relevant regulation so that particular alignment with quality assurance system has been taken care of in this particular guideline next major aspect that the sponsor need to know is regarding the regular status reporting so sponsors are now required to submit the status report to the licensing authority that is cdso at regular intervals okay so it is very important that all the sponsors submit the status report in order for the licensing authority to know that how the trial is functioning are there any challenges are there any uh, adverse event serious adverse event and how the trial is proceeding these report uh, provide update on the progress of the trial and it also ensures one of the most important aspect that is transparency so the cdso is engraining the requirement for regular status reporting in guidelines itself so that it is very clear to all the sponsor that status reports are to be taken very seriously in order to maintain subject safety trial progress as well as ensuring transparency next aspect is the adverse event reporting now when it comes to serious adverse event reporting you, we all know the 24 hour and 14 day communication required and now the cdso or the indian regulatory is uh, emphasizing that whenever it comes to sai it must be promptly communicated within the 14 days including the initial and the follow up and uh, this has to be uh, done uh, to the licensing authority and or uh, to the participating investigators also so that everyone knows that what are the sai is occurring and uh, no one is kept in the shadows about the effects of the molecular sai reported in this particular trial and this will definitely have a major impact on patient safety as well as uh, on timely intervention so adverse event uh, reporting is one of the most critical aspect that cdso has been taken care of because it was having an impact when it comes to assessing sai or knowing sai is occurred at other different site in the same clinical trial so that particular requirement has been taken care of so finally what can we conclude from this draft guidelines so from this draft guideline we can say that the cdso has revised the guidelines and ensured that it is aligned with the global standards with ndct rule 2019 and it is a significant step towards uh, streamlining this clinical trial approval system for uh, biological uh, and biotechnological products in india and by releasing this draft guidelines and ensuring that uh, it has say of everyone the all stakeholders involved in clinical trial it will definitely uh, help in promotion uh, of clarity efficiency and international alignment 
okay so that it can ensure that india is on par with all of the regulatory authorities across the globe and this particular guidelines is also expected to accelerate the development of the new drugs uh, for patients in india and around the world and india being the pharmacy uh, of the world it is very important that the regulations are also on par with the global standards so this was about the draft guidelines released by the cdsco so thank you for watching this video please make sure that you subscribe to our channel because it is very important for us to get that motivation and bring you such quality updates if you have benefited from this video make sure you subscribe to the channel and keep following us thank you